public group, which is vital to both UK and Welsh governments on UK on the public's behaviour. A couple of texts from you. Thank you very much for getting in touch. A five oh five eight is the number. Chris in Brighton says, for goodness sake, just go to any airport, park, shopping centre, supermarket, bar, and so on. Nobody is observing or I can say distances, isolating, and so on. Many have them throughout. The government's leaving the public to use their own judgment in simply shifting them, shifting the blame for the consequences of their scandalous mismanagement and to us. Shameful. Someone else that hasn't given their name says, Naga, given the opportunity, 20% of people would be selfish and irresponsible. The government's pussyfoot around these people for fear of losing their votes at election time, and the rest of us suffer the consequences. Keep your thoughts coming in. It's certainly a topic that we're going to be coming back to over the next couple of hours. Now, Nick Hatfield has the news slightly late. Sorry, Nick. Morning to you. Um, and you are picking up on the theme of holidays. Yeah, we're talking about this a lot at the moment, aren't we, really? And it's the EU that we're going to be talking about this today. They're holding discussions on whether to allow unrestricted visits from British tourists who are fully vaccinated. But most member states are on the UK's amber list, meaning you would have to quarantine anyway on the term. Elsewhere, higher clothing and energy prices contributed to a doubling of the UK's inflation rate in April. The Office for National Statistics says it rose to 1.5% from 07 in March. An investigation into Donald Trump's property company has now been treated as a criminal inquiry. The New York Attorney General's office is looking into the former US president's financial dealings before he took office. The Trump organization now is doing anything wrong. And some royal baby news, Buckingham Palace says Princess Beatrice is expecting a first child this autumn. The husband, Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi. Congratulations. Yeah. And wouldn't it know Naomi Campbell had a baby as well? He did. Yes, you put a lovely picture on Instagram, didn't she? Oh, thanks so much. And find out what's happening in the sport. Hugh, morning to you. Uh, morning, Naga. A big day for the names that will be announced by Steve Clark, who is revealing Scotland's first major championship squad for 23 years this afternoon. Normally there'd be 23 names too, but that's been extended to 26 for all the squads involved in the Euros for COVID reasons. And Ronnie Forsyth considers who they might be. Stephen Clark isn't overburdened with options as he plots Scotland's first campaign in the finals of a major tournament since France 98. And his choices reduced when he lost Rangers Ryan Jack and Kenny McLean of Norwich City to injuries. But there are candidates who have managed hope of claiming a place in the squad with Nathan Patterson, Rangers teenage breakthrough fullback amongst them. John Flight would love to add to his five caps, but he knows that midfield is the Scots' most competitive department. While in attack, there's a strong case for Kevin Nisbet. Perhaps but Dundee United's Lauren Shankland has also been touted, as has Lee Griffiths. He hasn't been a regular starter at Celtic, but he does have experience with 22 caps and four goals, including two spectacular free kicks against England. We will meet in the group stage of the European Championship, of course. Pep Guardiola says his Manchester City team will have to improve for their Champions League final against Chelsea. He claims he's concerned about their opponents being so tough after admitting that they tired with 10 men in their 3-2 defeat at Brighton last night. Meanwhile, both he and Thomas Tuchel are hopeful that key midfielders have avoided an injury that could affect that game in Porto. Ilkay Gundogan and Ugo Conte came off during their matches last night. American golf officials are hopeful that September's Ryder Cup will be played before a capacity crowd at Whistling Straits in Wisconsin. With the details, our golf correspondent Ian Carter. Speaking ahead of the US PGA Championship here at Kiowa Island, the boss of the PGA of America, Seth Ward, said that the world 